This is GEA Strength Muscle Flexibility Phase 1 Day 1. So, leg day first. You can hop in there. Nordics, supersetted, full foot elevated as well. So, you may not have a Nordic uh, bench. There's no way to do these. You can just you can do them with someone grabbing your ankles and start to set there anymore. You can do them with someone grabbing your ankles. Or else, and back up. So, what I want you to do is go forward, yep. put your hands in front like this, yep. and then push yourself back up. Okay. And keep straight from your shoulder down to your hips. Okay? Fall forward as slow as you can. Straight, straight, straight. And then pull yourself back up with your hamstrings. Exactly. Yep. Hips forward, squeeze the glutes. Pull yourself back up for your hamstrings. Exactly. Hips forward, squeeze your wrists. So if you haven't got an order to you get someone to hold your ankles, or you can put them under a barbell or under some sort of like box or rack. I've seen so many different um, ways of just holding your legs or keeping your legs in place used. So go for eight reps. Squeeze back up. Hips forward, squeeze the glutes. So this is like a body weight leg curl. Or squeeze the glutes, and this is going to be your main protector against hamstring tears. Uh, obviously, you need to factor in uh, your quads and your hip hinges and things like that, but this is the main direct exercise for your hamstring tears. Squeeze back up. So, front foot elevated split squat, front shoe up in the box, back leg back a little bit further. And bring your heel up high as you can. Back leg back a little bit further again. I want you to come all the way back. No, nope. so yeah, straighten the front leg and come all the way back. Back leg back, yeah. Okay, and now push that front knee forward. Perfect, perfect. Chest up, shoulders back, eyes gazing straight forward. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And you can see the way he's flexing his back hip flexor, his back leg. It's good and flexible, and you're pushing the front knee forward as far as possible. Knee over the toe. Chest up, shoulders back, and the front leg, as you can see there. It's doing what you, your front leg would be doing in a barbell squat, and the back leg then is stretching out the back hip flexor. When you need strength and flexibility in both legs, they're both doing different things. And this is an excellent starting point for building the range of motion that you need to do proper full range of motion barbell squat. Okay, and change side. As always, I like a bar uh, body weight set to warm up. Chest up, shoulders back, push the knee forward. Have a chance to warm up, get groove the movement pattern, use a light weight or no weight at all, get used to the movement, then start ramping up the weight set to set. Squeeze the glutes, chest up, shoulders back, push them down. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then pull yourself back up, use your hamstrings. Hips forward even more. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the hamstrings. Yeah. Use them to pull yourself all the way back up. Three. And 
Flex the back glute rather and stretch the back hip flexor. Push the knee forward and just head up, chin up a little bit more. So just gaze them in front again. Push the knee forward past the toe, flex back up. Push the knee forward past the toe, flex back up. Two more, for ten, and last one, press back up to the Okay, change side. So again, big gap in between, back heel up off the ground, flex the back glute to stretch your hip flexor, push the knee forward as far as you can, chest up, shoulders back. Off the hamstrings. Five. Again, fatigue now. And really squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Hips forward, hips forward, five. And you can pull back up. Six. And finally, two. Hips forward, hips forward, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And last one. Same again. Hips forward, squeeze. And drive. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Final set. Our top set. This is where we're going to use a little bit heavier weight. So every day you go in, this is the set that really matters. So what we're trying to do in this set is either add a couple of reps. So go from 8 reps the last day to 10 reps today, or 10 reps the last day to 12 reps today. So we either try and add more reps than you did with this weight the last day, or else we're trying to add weight. So maybe you did 12 kg the last day and you're doing 15 today. Or 15 the last day and you're going to 17 each hand today. So 15 kg each hand is very strong, that's 30 kg total in weight and usually if people can do half their body weight or three quarters of their body weight that will be a very strong split squat um, especially for this variation because it's usually easier to go a bit heavier in the Bulgarian split squat so Nemo here is not, isn't far away from half his body weight this is a very big range of motion. Push the knee forward and flex back up hard. Good. Push the knee forward, drive the heel to the ground, flex back up hard. Knee forward, flex back up. Chest up, shoulders back. 
Keep the upper body really tight, squeeze the shoulder blades back together, squeeze the weight, keep the heel up, and don't let the back leg bend, and flex back up. Series, the B series, uh, two exercises, a single leg hip thrust, super sound, with heel elevated goblet squat. So, you hook your knee, chin down, head looking straight forward, and drive up and squeeze the glute, contract really hard at the top. Squeeze glute, good. And this is an excellent glute isolation exercise because it's actually quite difficult to get exercises that are only isolating uh, one glute at a time. So you can do single leg exercises like lunges and Bulgarian split squats and things like that, and they're working the glutes, but they're not working the glutes without working the quads. So it's very rare that you get a good exercise that can work the glutes very, very hard one glute at a time without it mainly being a quad exercise. So chin down, head looking straight forward, and drive up, drive up, squeeze, and change side. So chin down, again, and you're really focusing on that contraction at the top. The first time people do this, they find it extremely difficult. You need good flexibility in the ankles and the hip flexors, and they find it very, very hard to get to that end range up at the top. So a lot of people will be able to do the bottom range of a hip thrust all day long. Then when you try and get them up to the top, where the glute is contracting the hardest, they find it extremely difficult to get up to that height. So drive up, squeeze the glute, hold that for a second, and it gives off that crampy feeling. And I find this perfect before moving into your heavier hip hinges, hip thrusts, like uh, uh, back extensions, RDLs, good mornings, barbell hip thrust. This is a great exercise to teach at the start before moving into that. So in the GPP phase. And up. So, how's that? Yeah, tough enough. Yeah, tough enough. Yeah. yeah. Heels close together, toes pointing out. Hold it up here. Toes pointing out a little bit more. Chest up. And really focus on bending the knees. Reload all the way to the ground. And this is a super movement for grooving that squat pattern. So when you move into your barbell squats, you want to effortlessly be hitting that depth. And you want that just to be automatic that anytime you're doing a barbell squat or a heavier front squat, that you're able to hit that end range uh, without struggling too much or leaning forward. This helps groove that pattern. So you can see he's nice and upright, knees going pushed forward on the way down. Uh, that Olympic barbell, Olympic lifter style of squat, chest up, shoulders back, and go for 12 reps per set. And fast up. And I don't like uh, locking out fully at the top only when you're struggling. So you go up to 90%, 95% of the way up and then back down straight away. So you're trying to keep tension on the quads all the time. Okay, second set. <laughs> so this set we're going to do max reps. So we're going to try and uh, see what failure is close to failure, so we're going to go, let's say 15 reps, so slow down and flex up, chin down, flex up harder and faster than you can, drive up, three, and squeeze the glute, really contract the glute, four, again this promotes flexibility and balance 
hands and the hips, the lower glutes has to be as strong as the other glutes. And to do the technique properly on both sides, you have to have a flexibility balance and a strength balance. So again, just an excellent choice for a GPP phase when you're getting ready for that heavier lifting, when you're after doing a full season where you're maybe compensating or you know, managing injuries or you know, moving off one side all the time. Great single leg exercise to get that structural balance back. Good. Glutes burn. Yeah. Okay. And drive up. Squeeze, drive, squeeze. And even higher. Three. Good. Now, as you can see there, his leg is shaking. Not because of any heavy weight or anything like that, it's just because of. The muscle isn't used to being in that range of motion. It's not used to being isolated like that. So drive up, squeeze the glute, and everything's being tested there, strength and flexibility in the glute and the hip flexor. Drive up. Again, perfect for a DPP phase to get all those balances, strength and flexibility balances going before the heavy lifting. Let's go five more. Go. Drive. Five. Four, up even higher, three, two, and up even higher. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Good. Great job. Tough. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, this is exactly what you're looking for at the start of your program. Is so how do you make your uh, exercises that demand a lot of balance, coordination, a lot of flexibility. How do you make them really, really hard without adding weight? So real low lean, real low. Real low bend the knees. Right. How do you make those exercises where you're not pushing massive weight really challenging in a productive way? So not just hard for the sake of being hard, but hard while promoting balance, while promoting flexibility, while promoting um, strength. Equally on both limbs after those long seasons, maybe nine, ten months on the pitch, uh, where you will always compensate solo and kicking off one side. Excellent. Well done. Okay, take a break. Okay, so this is the single leg calf raise, a really, really important one and often neglected one. So, uh, Achilles injuries and ankle injuries in general are very, very common in the GEA and a lot of other sports too. And this is a very, very good preventative uh, exercise for calves and ankles. So you might hear people say like calves are just for bodybuilders or things like that. Well, that's silly because if you're making your quads, hamstrings, glutes big and strong and the calves still the same size, same strength, same flexibility, you're going to run into issues, usually in the knee. So, what you're trying to do there is big stretch on the calf at the bottom and then flex up on the big toe at the top. Big stretch on the calf at the bottom and then straight up flex on the big toe at the top. So, go. What you're trying to do is feel the biggest stretch possible at the bottom and then up high as you can at the top. And I find you can use as much balance, hold on to a rack, hold on to whatever, hand against the wall if you need to, and flex up high at the top. Again, it's not about like getting big, massive calves or anything like it, it's about promoting flexibility in the ankle and calf. And building strength, obviously. But Flexibility as well, so strength through flexibility. You feel that burning? Yeah. And flex hard as you can at the top. And the range of motion is very short, just here to here. So you want to bear that in mind. The range of motion is extremely short, so that means very controlled reps. If you're bouncing at all, then it's a waste of time. So you want to make sure very, very controlled reps. 
and squeeze up. Flex hard at the top and at the end of every set, or especially the last set, I would do a 10 second pause in the stretch position. So I'd hold there and I'd stretch that out. And this will be extremely sore the first time you do it, uh, especially the few days afterwards. Do this for a month, two months, three months in your off season. And I promise you, you'll feel the benefits in terms of uh, calf cramps, shin splints, uh, Achilles injuries, calf tears, all those things. So strength is never a weakness. And the idea that you're going to do get these big massive calves that are uh, you know, too blocky or too muscular for running around the football pitch after doing a few sets of body weight calf raises is very silly. So just like isolation shoulder work can be great for your shoulders, isolation glute work can be great for your heavier uh, leg lifts, isolation calf work can be brilliant for flexibility and when you're going back sprinting, sharp turning on the pitch. Squeeze up, up on the big toe at the top, squeeze up on the big toe. If you go on the small toe, you're going to take out an awful lot of the work. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Flex hard as you can. Flex the calf up. Last few seconds, five, four, three, two, one. So with the calf raises, what you do is build up the reps, and it's the same here with the tibialis raises. So the calf pushes the toe away, the tibialis lifts the toe back up. So this is brilliant, again, for your knees, ankles, for shin splints. You're trying to lift the toe up as high as possible to where your toe is nearly touching your shin. Okay, so when people are starting off, sometimes they can barely get their toe off the ground. They're so tight and inflexible. So lean up, just take off your shoes there. and do this one barefoot. And you're trying to get up as high as you can. You want your tailbone against the ground, or your tailbone against the wall. Lift your toe up as high as you can. And again, you might start off with three sets of 10, move to three sets of 12, three sets of 15, three sets of 20. For the tibialis right on the calf raise, that's how you progress them. Uh, you're not going to be adding big weight to either exercise, doing them body weight, building up their reps over three to six months. You'll see a huge difference. And even if you're in the in season, you can be doing uh, these calf exercises two, three times a week if you think that that's what's holding you back or you keep getting injuries in your calves and ankles. So it's not the magic bullet for everything. Um, especially if you've already badly damaged your ankles or sprained your ankles or ligaments or things like that. But definitely as a preventative measure of rehab, prehab, like after you've got the goal clear, or the all clear from your physio, uh, this is excellent work to be doing to stop those calf ankle injuries creeping up again and again. Lift the toe as high as you can. Feel like you're camping? Yep. So if it feels like you're cramping, you're doing it. <coughs> squeeze up. 